Thank you so much. Okay, so I was explaining uh, Dr. Nisha that you know our ears, uh, that is the inner ear has two parts, that is uh, the cochlea and the vestibular system. The cochlea is the one which basically helps us in hearing and vestibular system is the one which helps us in uh, balancing. And it contains a particular type of fluid which is called as indole. Mm -hmm. And uh, in simple language we have to understand that if there is any problem with related to the indolymph, it will damage both the hearing system as well as the balance system. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the inner ear, why it damages both is because, you know, we have a small tiny hair tilt inside the cochlear system also and inside the vestibular system also and which are identical. If they are identical, anything is damaging one hair tilt, it will damage the other hair cell also. Apart from that, you will be surprised to know that our vestibular system or the inner ear is also connected to our eyes. We call this as a vestibulo-ocular reflex which will help you to maintain the balance whenever your head is moving mm -hmm. or it particularly helps you in gauge stabilization. So when you are moving your head, it doesn't let the image to go blur basically. Mm -hmm. So that is how the ear and the balance systems are related to each other. So even that question from our audience, I think it's uh, related to that because she started initially the tinnitus kind of a system uh, problem. Like you were saying, the, those would be reflection of the problems with yes. the inner ear. If suppose, for example, uh, uh, the patient says that yes, I have tinnitus along with what I go, or reduced hearing sensitivity along with what I go, that indicates that both the cochlear as well as the vestibular systems are affected, mm -hmm. and that is how the signs like you know tinnitus or your hearing loss comes from the cochlear side, and the what I go comes from the vestibular side. That is how the ear and uh, I mean the hearing part and the balance part are related to each other. Uh, so, like Sujita was explaining, we have also seen that it could be cochlea plus the uh, vestibular part, both related, giving to the disorder. So, we have one more caller. Uh, let me see this. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Yeah, good afternoon, doctor. Uh, my name is Ram Kumar. I'm calling from Coimbatore, mm -hmm. Tamil Nadu. Hello, sir. You are audible. Yes, sir. Uh, so, could you please be... Can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, you are audible, sir. Could you please yeah. give your question? Yeah, actually, I have uh, some inquiry to make. Actually, I want a consultation regarding my uh, mom's kidney issue. Okay. Whenever she sits down or she gets up, she has this problem. She sees giddy in the left side. Okay. So I just wanted to have a consultation. Okay. Uh, so we have a, a subject experts with us. I'll uh, post this question to Dr. Sujit. So, okay. Thank okay. you. Yes, sir. Um, so you what is interact. the exact problem your mom is having? Is she feeling that? Uh, yeah. yeah. When she sits down after working or when she starts, to get up to, you know, start working, she sees giddiness. Okay. She can't, you know, continue to do whatever she is planning to do. Okay. And for uh, how much time this giddiness stays actually? Sorry, sir? What is the duration of the vertigo she is getting? Is yeah. it for 10 seconds, uh, 20 seconds, or how much time it is? It would be like 15 to 20 minutes stops. Okay. And uh, is it more in the early morning when she is trying to get up from the bed or she is uh, just turning in the bed? Yeah, mostly it's uh, early morning problem and okay. whenever she starts working in the afternoon, the same issue is there. Okay, so towards the evening is the uh, severity of illness is less? Yeah, towards the evening the illness is less, yes. Okay, and uh, what is her age now? She is 53. She is 53. Okay. Uh, uh, have you consulted any doctor over there for the problem? Yes, uh, we have consulted a general physician and uh, he has pointing out that she is having problem in her pressure. She is okay. having low blood pressure, but we have fixed it. Um, the thing is that you know this giddiness or the vertigo issues can happen because of lot of problems 
one is that uh, it can happen because of the autological issues that is if the person has problem related to the ear or if the problem is related to the nervous system or in general term if the problem is certain problem is related to the brain also okay so the thing is that for this giddiness your mom will require a thorough evaluation by an ent doctor okay, okay. by an audiologist and by a neurologist okay and the diagnosis of this vertigo goes by the exclusion criteria so one by one they have to rule out that you know what is the cause and what is not the cause for this uh, vertigo but as per uh, what symptoms you have explained this is just based on the symptoms what you have explained this condition uh, is called as benign paroxysmal positional vertigo wherein the subject will have vertigo only when they are trying to get up early morning from the bed or they are turning in the bed and towards the morning the severity of this vertigo is more and towards evening the severity of this vertigo is less actually so but i can only tell based on the symptoms i cannot tell you the correct diagnosis that uh, she has bpcb only uh, she will require a very thorough evaluations of uh, the ear the vestibular system and also the central nervous system unless and until it is done completely i cannot definitely tell you that you know she has bpcb and what will be the line of treatment actually so if you could uh, consult any ent doctor first and uh, a neurologist i think you will get a better picture okay okay doctor would you like to add on okay thank you okay i hope it answers your question so please consult a nearby ent at the earliest and if it, if you have any other queries you can always uh, see our website and there's okay. also online consult thank in you, aish thank you to do that thank you so as rightly pointed out we have all now established the links that can be there between hearing and uh, balance so ma'am uh, so you were also discussing saying that it can be because of a systemic illness that could be uh, manifested in the uh, elderly groups and so uh, let's see what happens with children ma'am so uh, do vestibular problem occur with children also can they exist if so well, what if will you be go the by clinical studies and uh, if you look into the statistics like the prevalence rate and the incidence rate uh, most of the clinical studies are conducted on adults and geriatric groups mm -hmm. so there are very few studies conducted on the children mm -hmm. and that is for the simple reason that uh, children do not know how to tell their problems even if they are having the symptom they do not know how to express it many times we find that the adults as well as the elderly age group people itself cannot with uh, conviction tell what's happening to them we really have to ask them some leading questions we will have to ask a few negative uh, history taking and then try and see if they can answer those questions so in children the problem is even if they have issues they are unable to express it so that means to say uh, the kind of incidence or prevalence rate which are given in books mm -hmm. with respect to pediatric age group uh, misses out on a lot of cases so it's near never really what is present mm -hmm. okay that is because children have issues like so whenever they are taking history in cases of children but in children also you can have vestibular problems mm -hmm. like you can have congenital anomalies of the labyrinth just like how you can have congenital anomalies of cochlea you can have congenital anomalies of the vestibule also mm -hmm. you can have an enlarged vestibular duct or you can have hypoplasia of your canals mm -hmm. all that can happen there also mm -hmm. or your children children can have a labyrinthitis or they can have benign paroxysmal positional vertigo mm -hmm. even children can have most of the people or lay public mm -hmm. are under the impression that migraine is something that's uh, limited to elders mm -hmm. no it is not really true children also suffer from migraine so vestibular migraine can also give rise to children which is not very well diagnosed underrated just because they do not know how to express themselves and the parents fall or fail to understand what the child does so whenever uh, you think that your patient or your kid is trying to kind of tell you symptoms which are not specific like you know or he has a lot of uh, falling issues or he doesn't walk with confidence or he grips on to something and always seek support like for example you are trying to walk a staircase 
as a child normally a child whose locomotor system is well established and uh, who's going to school and all that must be able to usually see children running on staircases but if your child is kind of cautiously trying to tread well then you'll have to find out why he or she is doing that or he tries to do it or if he is very drowsy or wants to sleep for some time or says that uh, i have double vision mm-hmm. or those kind of things so then probably but if they have issues like ear discharge and all they come to us because that is smelling and then there is something a liquid coming out of the mm-hmm. ear and all that that uh, kind of gets the, pa- the parents attention but these are pre- problems which are unseen by them or many a times they are, they do not have clue as to what is happening so vestibular problems also affect children it is kind of not reflected well in statistics or in clinical practices because they do not know how to tell so they seeking medical help is less so that doesn't mean that it is not there it's there okay so people with sensory neural hearing loss but the another thing that we would like to add here is that children have if they have a very good central nervous system compensation if they have an acute symptom say for example they have suffered from an acute labyrinthitis so they had giddiness which lasted for a week and if they have a good central nervous system which is capable of compensating it mm-hmm. then they recover so fastly that it might go unnoticed so that doesn't mean it will not happen it will happen and uh, in fact children compensate much better than adults their adaptability is much better okay but then also they can have issues like bpbb they can have issues like vestibular migraine they can have labyrinthitis they can have central vestibular acquired syndromes they can even have cerebral or hypoplasias frederick's ataxias or some kind of motor neuron disorders epilepsy is one thing which i would like to see so patients with epilepsy especially temporal lobe epilepsies can have giddiness as a symptom they can have an aura also so when parents or children are having non specific symptoms parents must kind of take them a little seriously or kind of probe into it to get more questions so even children can get such so we we'll, we are getting one more call let's attend to it hello 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 yes hello madam this is uh, anita yes please uh, anita may i know where you are calling from i'm calling from bangalore okay hi anita okay you can you can please give us your question yeah oh uh, my question is that uh, well my grandmother has hearing loss okay and uh, she kind of complains of hearing buzzing sound mm-hmm. when she gets up after sleep okay and and she also complains of headache like particularly after getting up mhm yeah uh, can you please tell me as to uh, what what should i be doing as in to approach the uh, okay. professional or uh, what should i be doing exactly uh, sure uh, one minute i'll just pass this on to one of our experts dr rajeshwari is here with us she is uh, yeah. the uh, hod of ent so she'll take up your question you can talk yes. to her how long your grandmother has been having this problem uh ma'am uh, close to 5 to 6 years and uh, i'm sure you must have consulted doctors right yes 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 ma'am uh, have they made a diagnosis or they has she undergone any evaluation really uh she is now using hearing aids uh, but again she is not really happy with its uh, uh, progress as well you mean uh, apart from that nothing really i mean she's on uh, hypertension tablets hmm that's that's all uh she's using hearing uh, her vertigo problem started after her hearing loss or her hearing loss was there prior to the vertigo also no no hearing loss was there earlier also so the vertigo is the new symptom yeah yeah it is something new now and she is a hypertensive also yes 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 uh see anita there are uh, two things one is like how uh, we if you been watching our program from the beginning you know that ear is not just an organ of hearing it's okay. also an organ of balance okay? okay so since it's an organ of balance and uh, your your grandmother has both the symptoms the hearing issue as well as the balance issue so that uh, makes it like maybe she is having an inner ear problem and her hypertension okay. might be contributing to it maybe worsening the existing situation okay no okay 
So if her hypertension is well under control and if that is not contributing and her problem is only because of the ear problem, then probably does she, uh, she is incapacitated, she is only lying down on the bed or she walks around comfortably? No ma'am, she is now around 85 so, so okay. not much of uh, physical activity. Okay, okay. Uh, well, geriatric practice is entirely a different practice. At 85, you can't possibly be having her. Now, I would like to tell you three things. That for somebody to have their balance, you require not just your ear, you also require your proprioceptive receptors which are there in your feet. In other words, your musculoskeletal system must be intact. And second, your vision also must be intact. So, all the three things put together will maintain your balance. So, in a geriatric patient, there is a compromise of all these three. Their vision is not so good enough, then they have this hearing problem which has worsened their things and as well as they ma her musculoskeletal system also must be weak from what you are saying that she is walks around only at home. So we will have to look into her audiogram if she has got bilateral losses. The fact that she is having using a hearing aid means to say that she must be having about moderate to severe degree of hearing loss. Yeah, okay, so that then she has a compromised vestibular function also. So in a geriatric case, especially when they have these vestibular issues, their uh, uh, their confidence comes down. So they're not confident. So even small small problems, they would kind of relate it or kind of you know it is difficult for them to compensate. But still, there is nothing lost to hope because if what I go if hearing is a problem, uh, her if she is using a digital hearing aid that can be programmed, well, that will take care of her hearing. As far as her vertigo is concerned, she, if she has a bilateral loss and the ear is responsible for it, she can go in for a good vestibular rehabilitation therapy, which consists of a few exercises, which she needs to religiously practice at home. Okay, that way she will keep it, uh, she will keep herself occupied by doing it. And second, uh, that will lead on to a good compensation. How is her vision? Vision is also declined, ma'am. Ah. So now you got the answer to all your questions. We are dealing with a case who is 85, with a compromised vision, with a compromised musculoskeletal system, along with the ear issue. So all the three factors which would help in balance are contributing to it. So obviously all the three have to be rehabilitated. So for the hearing, you are using the hearing aid. For her vestibular problem, you will have to start her on a VRT, on a vestibular rehabilitation therapy. Okay, which okay. consists of a few exercises and then uh, if her vision is bad, then you will have to ask her to wear spectacles so that if the vision improves, their confidence also comes back. At least if she sees yes. what she is walking around and all that. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, madam. Oh, and uh, can, you, can you give more information regarding vestibular uh, uh, rehabilitation? Rehabilitation? Yes, would, yes, yes. Uh, would you like oh, to well. <laughs> There are few, uh, keep watching the show, uh, Dr. Sujit will tell you about vestibular rehabilitation, the kind of exercises and all those things. I, okay. Since you have uh, asked this question, I, uh, I would like to take it to Sujit, uh, Dr. Sujit, he will uh, answer you. So you can watch it live, it's uh, on Facebook. I would now like okay. to uh, cut the calls so that uh, yes. we can take up his opinion on BRT. Yes. Yeah, okay. okay, thank you for calling Anita. Bye. Yes, sir. Okay. Would you like to answer for the VRT part of the uh, No, vestibular rehabilitation exercises are uh, very simple exercises uh, that helps uh, in improving the balance or uh, the vertigo of a patient. We have to simply understand that, you know, there are certain vestibular disorders uh, which has to be treated medically. So, the first line of treatment for any vertigo patient is a medical line of treatment. And once the medical line of treatment they improve, there is no further uh, need of anything else. But uh, we have to understand that there are certain disorders, such as particularly which are related to the inner ear. And uh, as I was explaining that there are small tiny hair cells inside the cochlea and there are small tiny hair cells which are there inside the vestibular system. And now if there, there is a damage to these uh, hair cells, and now these are sensory cells which cannot be recovered back or which doesn't get generated, regenerated basically. So once it is damaged, it is damaged. So there is something called as central compensation. So whenever there is a loss to this, there is some amount of central compensation which will occur in patient. But there are certain disorders wherein this compensation will not occur. Then we need to work upon this vestibular rehabilitation. 
and uh, what exercises we give it is called as vestibular rehabilitation exercises and as i was also explaining that you know our ear is related or connected to the eyes and also the ear uh, there is another connection which is connected to the spinal cord which is known as vestibular spinal reflexes so basically whenever there is a damage to the inner ear our uh, connection between the ear and the eyes are getting affected and also the connection between the ears and the spinal cords are getting affected so we design certain customized exercises which are based upon uh, the sign and symptoms of the patient and uh, we are basically what we are doing is nothing but an adaptation and habituation exercises such as for example there is a patient who says that you know whenever i stand and i try to walk i feel like you know i am going to fall towards right side or i am going to fall towards left side that indicates that person has weakness towards the right side or the left side then we design certain exercises which helps in improving the balance of that person so that you know uh, on the repeated exposure of those exercises the in, the balance function of the person will improve and the sensation of this falling towards one side will disappear there will be another patient who will tell you that you know whenever i am moving my head to right side or the left side i am feeling like you know the image is getting blurred or i feel like you know i am having what i go then we design certain exercises for the person wherein you know repeated exposure of the movement will uh, uh, adapt the system or they will get habituated to this so that the sensation will disappear the basic uh, principle of this vrt is that you know the more you move the more you become better so that is where the vestibular rehabilitation exercises will help with some type of vestibular disorder not all so like you rightly mentioned sir it can only help with some of them yeah. but not uh, everyone not everyone ma'am what is the take on that ma'am what other uh, medical line of approach you have or do we have some surgical corrections for those who cannot be treated with vrt so whenever you are evaluating uh, balance problems the first thing that a consultant does is to classify it into a peripheral or a central, central disorder okay or is there a systemic involvement which is aggravating the existing situation so the list of investigations that we would ask for is basically an audiogram along with try and see if the patient is not anemic or has diabetes or hypertension or his lipidemias so his lipid profiles are important his thyroid functions also are equally important because hypothyroidism are supposed to be kind of weaken the nerves mm. okay and so there are certain inner ear problems which uh, allergy is also a manifestation or if the patient has allergy then the inner ear problems worsen okay. so that kind of contributes so we would do a allergy work up also so if the patient does give you history of any kind of growth or added symptoms like bloody discharge or ear discharge then you'll have to even go ahead and do a high resolution ct scan also may be required okay? okay so this is how we would work up a case so initially when the patient comes if he comes to you with an acute manifestation say for example i was perfectly okay yesterday and this morning i got up with a severe spinning and i'm not able to move out of my bed hmm. you possibly cannot practically speaking you cannot send such a patient to all the evaluations first because he has to be relieved of his acute symptom first and then only he becomes cooperative for the rest of the test so i think there's a call yes hello 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 sir we are in live phone ella check marsko beko so adikke neevu bandu illi mysore hatra idre nam institute ge banni illina ella check up ella agutte ಮತ್ತೆ ಒಂದು ತಲೆ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ನರ್ವಸ್ಟ್ ತೋರಿಸಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ನೀವು ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ಇವಾಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಮಾಡಿ ನಾವು ಹೇಳಕ್ಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಏನ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಇದೆ ಅದ್ ಮೇಲೆ ನಾವು ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಿ ಏನ್ ಟ್ರೀಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅಂತ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಯ್ತಾ ಸೊ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಏನಂದ್ರೆ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ನೀವು ತೋರಿಸ್ಬೇಕು ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಈ ತಲೆ ಸುತ್ತು ಬಿ ಪಿ ಇಂದ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದೆಯಾ ಅಥವಾ ಡಯಾಬಿಟೀಸ್ ಇಂದ ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದೆಯಾ ಅಥವಾ ಬೇರೆ ಕಾರಣ ಇದೆ ಅದೇ ಎಲ್ಲ ನೋಡ್ಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ಆಯ್ತಾ ಟ್ರೀಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡಬಹುದು ಅನ್ನೋದು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ
ಇಲ್ಲಿ ವಾಕ್ ಶ್ರವಣ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆ ಅಂತ ಮೈಸೂರಲ್ಲಿದೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ಬರಬೇಕು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ನಾನು ವಿ ವರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಸಿ ಟಿ ಅಲೋನ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದಿ ಮೆಡಿಕಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ so when the patient is having acute symptoms like say maybe he has a rotation or a spinning and he is throwing up and he's got vomiting and all you can't possibly be asking him to go for his investigations and he is also not in a physical state to do that mm. so most of them do get admitted because they start panicking once they have a vertigo for some reason lay public think once you have a vertigo it is related to your central nervous system it may be related but it can also be related to your ear it may also be related to your cardiovascular system or anything so most of them do seek medical help and they would kind of uh, insist the doctors to admit them so few of them would kind of you know want to be treated with oral uh, tablets so we do give prescribe to them labyrinthine sedatives and that is only the labyrinthine sedatives work more mostly like symptomatic and uh, except a few labyrinthine sedatives which also are curative where they would kind of affect the vascularity of the cochlea or the vestibule also so where they would have uh, improvised hearing and all those things also so the clinicians are kind of based on the symptoms would look into whether they would require to use combination drugs or they would have to use a single drug and things like that but in uh, problems like bppv and all benign paroxysmal positional vertigo the medical management would always give rise to a recurrence because it doesn't really handle the etiology it doesn't affect the uh, the problem in a bppv is different they have canalolithiasis or they have cupulolithiasis so that means to say there is a lip formed in the inner ear fluid but that has to be liberated from the fluid so they would respond better to liberatory maneuvers so when it comes to vestibular problems you can have a medical line of management you can have liberatory maneuvers which are repositioning maneuvers you can even have if you have manias disease then you can even have a surgical option like giving them maybe intratympanic steroids or maybe giving them intratympanic gentamicin mm. and there are people who come with sudden sensory neural hearing losses whose manifestation is hearing loss along with an acute vertigo for a patient who is absolutely normal yesterday okay. so in such situations we would even go ahead and give them intratympanic gentamicin or inter- intratympanic steroids mm. and in a manias patient if they have intractable vertigos we would even consider giving them intratympanic gentamicin okay. so then you can have what is called as labyrinthectomies and in cases like vertigo is related to cp angle tumors and all and there obviously either we are asking them to go in for radiation so then kind depending on the size of the tumor they would be asked to go in for radiation so or maybe you will have to even do a surgery so or if you are dealing with a csom causing giddiness you have to take them up for an emergency mastoid surgeries with repair of the fistulas and things like that or if the patient is a csom patient who's gone in for an intracranial complication they also can manifest with vertigo so in such situation surgery plays a very important role obviously if you're doing surgery you got to hospitalize the patients work up them and then take them up as i think there's a call thank you for coming hello hello Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Madam, my name is Mohan. I'm calling from Mysore itself. Yes, sir. And I'm sir. facing an issue that whenever I walk, now I lose my balance. Okay. And uh, I heard it from you that there is a connection between ears and losing balance. So that is why I called you here. Sure, sir. And is there any necessity to wear any mission or uh, uh, to undergo any uh, surgery like that? Uh, can you please advise me? Okay. Uh, we were just now talking about ear and it, its relation to balance also so i have a subject expert with me dr rajeshwari will answer your question sir sure madam you can sure. please talk to her how long you been having this problem mohan from almost one year madam and have you ever consulted a doctor no not at not, not at madam that means you managing i think it's right thought that you managing uh, I, i don't feel it is in serious issue that is why i have yeah not yeah that's what are you managing it all by yourself it's if it is not a serious issue then you're making a phone call no 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 um, not uh, very often i'm facing this so once in a while ah so ah, that okay. means to say you have an intermittent problem you're saying ah, yes it, it's not an, on an everyday basis and you have an intermittent problem yes yes, yes. well uh, balance is related to your uh Well, from your question what i understand is your uh, the fact that you have not consulted a doctor is that 
You are assuming that you may have hearing issues and people will prescribe hearing aid for you. Yes, yes <laughs> that is your because fear. I am not facing any hearing issue, but uh, I have heard somewhere that there is a connection between <laughs> ears and uh, balance. In not the, all, so uh, not all ear issues. We would prescribe hearing aids only if it affects your hearing. Okay. Only then we would prescribe you a hearing aid, right? Yes. So yes, in your case, since you do not have hearing issues and you have balance problem, then you will have to be worked up on. For, for, for us, you will have to be testing you only for your balance issues. Okay, okay so you shouldn't have that apprehension that, uh, whether they'll give you a... My grandmother, uh, she was hearing impaired, so is there any connection between that and uh, me? Well, I, there are certain disorders which have genetic etiology. But don't you think uh, all the old people have some uh, vision issues and hearing issues? No, it's very common. almost had from her uh, childhood to uh, yeah, 70s, madam, almost 30 years, uh, she had a uh, hearing impairment oh. and uh, she passed away. Last year. So your question is, is there a genetic uh, connection? Yes, there is a genetic connection. Well, only if we kind of evaluate you. Uh, see, your grandmother had both hearing issue as well as balance issue. Balance, I didn't observe that balance issue. She never said that. But she had a hearing, hearing impairment. Issue. Ah. See, your problem is different from your grandmother's problem. You are not having hearing issue. You are having only balance problem. Yes. She is having hearing issue. So... Though there are certain disorders which do have a genetic etiology, don't assume that you are having a genetic etiology. Instead of that, consult a doctor, however small the symptom may be. Okay? okay, okay. Than to leave in doubt, it is better to clarify. Right? Yes, madam. Yes. Okay. I need to consult. Yeah, I think maybe you should see an ENT doctor and explain your symptoms to him. Okay. So, don't be under the fear that he is going to prescribe you a hearing aid. They won't do that. Okay, so they will examine you and tell you why you are having that issues and what need to be rectified. Okay. Okay. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, please Good consult. Uh, uh, please consult an ENT nearby. Uh, alternatively, uh, al uh, al alternatively, you can come to Aish. Aish is always open from 9 to 5.30 on uh, okay. all the working days till Friday. So, please come here. And we, we would sure, be able to give you sound diagnosis. Yeah, Thank you, yeah. And uh, do it at the earliest. Sure, That's sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Sir, so like ma'am was discussing, surgical approaches can be different. And he was saying that there can be a genetic etiology. And also that he's been managing from one hour. So what is the role of early identification, sir? Like how crucial See, what it will is. happen is as ma'am was explaining that you know there are some acute cases there are some you know not so acute cases so the whole management depend upon you know whether the case is in very acute stages or it's not in acute stages something like let me just give me one example that you know uh, if somebody has a vestibular neuritis now vestibular neuritis where the patient will have very severe vertigo and patient will not be able to manage himself or herself. Mm -hmm. So when the patient is not able to manage himself or herself, then what will happen is patient need to be admitted immediately to the hospital first. Okay. Rather than you know uh, going for any kind of investigation because the, pa the patient will be panicked, the, uh, the relatives of the patient will be pa panicked because of this uh, severe vertigo. So what will happen is uh, it depends upon case to case basis that you know how uh, it has to be done. But uh, early identification when you say that you know it has to be done. See what will happen is uh, in the case of hearing loss people may have such something like you know uh, they have some amount of hearing loss and they tend to ignore. But what I go is something wherein the individual will have that a spinning sensation wherein they will feel that entire building is rotating around them or they are rotating around the building. Immediately actually they will report that you know they are having these issues and uh, they are not able to manage with that and they will come to you immediately mm -hmm. okay so what i go is something which will disturb the patient very badly and they will immediately seek the help okay. so the early identification and coming uh, to the doctors at the earliest is the key so that's the message ma'am uh, so uh, can we uh, take home message from you saying what can uh, a layman follow at their home to maintain their vestibular systems and try not uh, getting into such problems? See, mostly whenever the symptoms are mild, 
people tend to ignore unless they become incapacitated. Okay. So the take home message is after you're 40, get yourself evaluated for on an annual basis. Get yourself evaluated for your diabetes or hypertension. By doing a blood test or by going to a general practitioner and checking your BP, you don't lose anything. At least you are on guard. Instead of being kind of, you know, caught abruptly or caught unaware. Mm. So that's the first thing that I would like to say. Second, when you have symptoms pertaining uh, to balance issues or hearing issues or tinnitus, if you're having balance issues with tinnitus, please seek an ENT surgeon's help. Probably you're having an ENT problem. Mm. But if you're having only balance issues, you can either see an ENT person or a physician or a neurologist who would make the right referral if you are not having the problems related to their speciality. Mm. So that's the second thing that you have to do. The third thing is hearing and balance are intricately related to each other. Mm. There are many disorders which are affecting both the cochlea as well as the vestibular system. In some, the vestibular symptoms manifest earlier. The cochlea gets affected later like in case of Meniere's disease. Mm. So in such situations, if you seek a doctor's help early, you can even preserve your hearing. So that is something that people should understand that if you have some tinnitus or if you have some hearing losses, which you can check by your mobile. Okay, so if you're placing all, there is nothing to be embarrassed. Just like how people are very vocal when they have visual problems. Mm -hmm. But when they have hearing problems, they're a little reluctant to admit it and they would try and kind of, you know, be managing. Mm -hmm. Unless somebody at home scolds them for raising the volume of their TV or raise their voice and talk on a mobile. But this kind of, so if they, many of my patients do tell me, Ma'am, I do not have any issues, but people at my home say that uh, I don't hear properly. Mm. So, actually, they are aware that there is an issue. It is just that they are not admitting or acknowledging it because Somebody. wearing a hearing aid is a taboo. In the society, that is, that is something that we should go. When you have a problem, there is a solution. It has a treatment mm. and the earlier you seek, you, there will be a lot of uh, kind of uh, minimizing, not getting it too complicated. So, arrest at the earliest. Mm -hmm. So, that is what you have to do. So, when you have a problem, instead of shying away from it, please seek help. It can be a small problem or a big problem. A small problem can manifest or complicate. Okay? And it can go into an irreversible state. Mm -hmm. So, why take that chance? So, as long as you're staying, live healthily. Couldn't agree for more. Like as long as we stay, it's in our hands to protect our ears, and so protect our hearing and balance both together. So, is there anything you would like to add on, sir? No, no. I think ma'am has said it. Okay. Thank you so very much. This was a very enlightening session, ma'am and sir. I am so happy that uh, there were a lot of calls, and uh, I'm very thankful to both of you for hearing them very patiently and answering them in very simple terms. Like we kept emphasizing what layman can do and I'm sure this helped most of the audience and those who were live as well. Thank you all for participating and uh, your feedbacks and suggestions are always welcome for any queries regarding uh, either hearing or anything about balance. It is uh, always important that you come to us at Aish. We are available from 9 to 5.30 uh, on all the working days. Uh, you can also seek assistance for online therapy and online assessment using www.aishmysoor.in or you can alternatively call the TCPD number which is 0821-250-2530. I repeat, it's 250-2530. Thank you everyone. We look forward hearing from you. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Nisha. Thank you, ma'am.